going on guys? It's Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets. That was a close one. In this video... In this video, <laughs> I'm trying not to kill myself, but we are fixing one of the biggest issues of the rear 14 bolt axle. So welcome back to the third episode of the JK One Ton Swap video series. You can look at this axle now and say, man, this thing is huge. The ground clearance must suck, and it really does. Uh, the 14 bolts are referred to, you know, the vehicle anchor, just because this thing gets hung up on all the rocks. It's a really low hanging axle, especially compared to other aftermarket axles and especially the stock Dana 44. So there's a few ways to fix this, one that's on the ground now, and the more expensive option, which would be a full shave kit. Uh, if your budget allows it and you have, um, you know, a lot of skill and good fab work, it's definitely a good option. What that does is pretty much cut the entire bottom part of your diff off weld a plate onto it and of course you have to machine your ring gear down because we just decreased the size so that price you're looking at 400 500 bucks for that kit plus the machined ring gear it gets pricey quick but you do get some of the best clearance on the market another great option is to go with this guy was just trying to take my foot out a 13 bolt diff cover what this is going to do is give us about an inch and a quarter ground clearance so since we have to run a new diff cover anyways, go ahead and get a 13 bolt diff cover. I got this from Barnes four wheel drive. I've had great experiences with them in the past. And 186 bucks, we are getting a heavy duty diff cover as well as some gained ground clearance with the 13 bolt. So let's do it. First step is going to be to remove the factory diff cover. At this point, our axle should be pretty much free of gear oil. So we can pop the cover off without worrying about a bunch of gear oil spilling off. There's still a little bit up in there and we will clean it off before we start cutting. You can see how much material is underneath this bottom bolt. That right there is about two inches. So we're gonna have plenty left over once we cut this. Let's go ahead and slap this diff cover on to see how much clearance we're gonna get. So we're gonna be removing this entire area down here. So if we take the measuring tape at, you can see right there, inch and a quarter of added ground clearance. Pretty cool. We're gonna simply cut along here. We can use a few different tools. We can simply use a grinder with a cutoff wheel and do a nice cut. We can use a sawzall to make our cut. Or if you have a bandsaw, you can just make a nice clean cut. That's gonna be the best option, but I don't have one here. So I'm probably gonna use a mixture of the grinder and the sawzall. So let's mark our cut. What we can do is simply use our sawzall here to make the first kind of marking. We're gonna go in at an angle, just so we get a nice line. Now that we have that pretty well marked with the Sawzall, we're gonna pop this diff cover off and make our cut. Hopefully now you're able to see a little bit better uh, what we're actually removing. Now, that is exactly where the diff cover sits. So cutting it, I'm gonna give us a little of extra room because we can always grind it down more. We can't add metal to it. So I'm gonna start off with my grinder with my cutoff wheel and make a nice baseline of where we are actually trimming this. All right, we made our marking. We can flip it up now to make sure our angle is gonna be nice and smooth. And it looks like it's gonna be pretty good. When I'm making this cut, I'm not cutting exactly level. I'm kind of angling the cut down so we can once again go back with the grinder and really smooth it out and make sure we get the exact finish that we want. Switch back over to the Sawzall. Okay. 
So let's flip it over and see what it looks like. So something I forgot to mention. So since we are using the newer style 14 bolt for this swap series, it does have a drain plug in the bottom of the diff. Make sure before you make this cut that you get your 3 8 ratchet and tighten that drain plug down as tight as you can get it because we want that we're gonna cut it off. So this is no longer operable and we are gonna weld it closed so it doesn't come loose. The bolt is still on the inside of the axle, uh, so it's sealed up, but you wanna make sure it's nice and tight before making this cut. It's really no big deal losing the drain plug because we can still pop the diff off when we drain our fluid. It's a good idea uh, to pull your diff cover anyways when you do gear oil changes. So you can inspect the bearings, you can look at the ring gear, make sure everything's still doing good. We're gonna grab our welder and weld whatever is left of our drain plug in this bottom bolt hole. Now we are welding to a cast center section. So really you do wanna kind of preheat it so the welds don't crack. And then you also wanna bring the temperature down slowly. You can do that with an insulated welding blanket or like a post weld heat treatment. What, uh, what I'm gonna do, since this isn't really a structural weld, I'm just gonna heat it up. I'm actually out of map gas, which is the preferred, either that or a big torch. Um, I'm out of it, I'm gonna use propane probably heat it up to like 300, 400 degrees, make the weld, and then slowly cool it down with post weld heat treatments. All right, so we're gonna start off by welding the inside of our drain plug. I already preheated it for about 10, 15 minutes. It's nice and hot, and we're just doing a nice plug weld so we don't get any leaks out of this drain plug. We're doing the inside and on the outside as well. So I made a pretty big pool of weld, started off at the top and then brought it down the diff a little bit. That way we can go back with a grinder and we know that the whole thing is nice and welded. But we're going to continue this post heat treatment. So while this is kind of slowly cooling down, I'm just every once in a while keeping it warm, going back on the inside, just letting it slowly bring down in temp, uh, it's just a nice slow post heat but I'm gonna start preheating this divot here where the old uh, diff cover bolt was. I went ahead with my uh, grinder and kind of made it into a nice V so we have a nice uh, surface to weld on. Already cleaned it out. I'm just gonna heat this up a little bit more and then we're gonna fill that with weld. little tip start welding from the back and go towards the, the cover and right there at the end hang on to that puddle a little bit let it build up so you have a nice big puddle on top and not on the face of the diff cover because we're going to have to grind that down you don't want a huge weld puddle sitting on the face of the diff cover so right at that last little bit let it hang there for a second build up and it'll slowly work its way down so let's let this cool down for a little bit longer it's probably time to blast this with some more heat for you know, a good 20 seconds, let it cool down. I'll do it again in about 10 minutes. That's how you kind of work with this uh, post heat cycle. Now, if we were welding the truss to the diff, I would definitely go get a can of map gas and really heat this up with the infrared uh, thermometer and make sure that our temps are good. But for this, we're not really welding anything to it. We're just filling it with weld. So it's not as important, but this job is almost done. Still got a lot of work to clean it up, but this is the hard part. A lot of people are afraid to do this, but honestly, it's not that bad. You're not sacrificing anything that's, you know, structural. We're just filling in the holes so we don't get any leaks in the future. It's time to spend more time with our lovely friend, the grinder. Grind all our welds down smooth, make the cut smooth. We're gonna make sure the welds don't have any holes, make sure they're not porous. And if they are, we're gonna clean it up, weld, and then repeat.
all cleaned up. Let's throw the diff cover on. See how we did. Yeah, not too shabby at all. So you can tell I left a little bit of room. That's, I mean, that's like an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna leave it at that. If you really wanted to, you could grind this down more so it's level with the diff cover, but I have no issues with losing that much ground clearance. I'd rather have a little bit extra to wear away over time on the rocks and everything. Now, a few other things we could do is we could come and grind some of this down too, but that's not really a priority right now. I have a lot of stuff to do. And later on, if I really want to, we can come back and do that. But this is all ground down nice and smooth. Um, all the welds were really good. There was a little bit of a little bit of pores over here from the side of the weld puddle. That's not anywhere near the drain plug, so I'm not worried about that. But if you do find that you have some porous welds right in the middle where your drain plug is, I definitely recommend grinding it down and filling it in, you know, welding it again and grinding it down until you fill in any of those little holes because we really don't want to have any leaks here but this is sealed up we can do a leak test we can fill a little bit of gear oil in there rotate the pinion up and let it sit for a couple hours and see if we have any signs of gear oil coming out if we do repeat the process simply weld some more and try to find out where it's coming from but man that looks sick sorry I'm trying to rotate the diff but you can tell it just looks looks pretty cool we gained an inch and a quarter of ground clearance before we go ahead and call this a day, let's go ahead and hit it with a layer of steel it just so we don't have any flash frost issues. That's it guys. It's really not that hard and about an hour of work, we now have an additional inch and a quarter of ground clearance. Since we're replacing the diff cover anyways, go with the Barnes 13 bolt. You might as well. It's really not that difficult. A lot of people make it out, um, you know, a lot scarier than, you know, it should be. I am by no means a professional. This is my first one ton swap and you just can't overthink these things. Granted, I would do this before you weld on the truss and do your lockers and gears and everything because if for some reason you do mess up, oh well, go to the junkyard and get another $100 axle. But the chances of you actually messing this up, pretty slim. You can always weld, just don't cut too much off. Now. Another reason I say to do this before we do our locker install is because we don't want to have our new gears, all our new bearings and everything while we're grinding and welding in there because that is just asking for a horrible bearing failure, complete failure. Like before we even think about doing these gears, we're going to really have to wash out the inside of this diff and get any of the metal shavings off. If you do want to alleviate that, you can leave the diff cover on when you make the, uh, the cut, but I wanted to kind of see what was going on in there. But overall, great outcome i still eventually might go and shave this but for less than 200 bucks we got a diff cover and more clearance definitely a no-brainer hopefully you guys enjoyed the video stay tuned for the fourth episode we are going to start welding the trusses on we're going to start with the rear just because it is a little less temperamental we don't have as many brackets and once again if we mess something up i'd rather meth we had meh no if we do mess something up, I'd much rather mess up the rear axle opposed to the front just because these are a lot easier to find than the Super Duty Dana 60. So it'll be good practice starting on the rear, but it should be straightforward. And we'll check out the swap truss kit in the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Like always, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, go down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And make sure you subscribe to JK Gear and Gadgets. Peace.